Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. Uh, this video module is going to be um, uh, the application of, of indifference curves to um, uh, common uh, problems, even managerial uh, problems. In the previous uh, uh, video module, we derived the indifference curves and we demonstrated how you can derive uh, the law of demand uh, from indifference curves, uh, uh, from a di indifference curve framework. In this video module, we're going to consider the impact of, of a subsidy for, say, disadvantaged people. We will also consider uh, the problem of, of trying to relocate uh, a new employee from a, a low-cost housing area to a high-cost uh, housing area. We can deal with the subsidy in terms of, of this now familiar uh, graph. Uh, in this graph, we have um, a good A on the vertical axis, good B on the uh, horizontal axis, and we have the individual at an equilibrium uh, combination of A. Now suppose the government uh, considers subsidizing uh, a good B. That is, it uh, effectively uh, provides producers of good B with a subsidy, the supply of the good goes up, uh, the price of the good goes down, and uh, because of the price decrease, consumers, if they spend all of their uh, their income on good B can now buy uh, B3. Uh, uh, good A is left unsubsidized, which means if consumers spend all of their income on A, they can only buy uh, combination uh, A1. Uh, so the new budget line, the new budget line uh, extends from a combination A1 to combination uh, B, uh, B3. It looks something uh, like this. And we can anticipate that the individual will now move out along the new uh, budget line. And we can say that the budget line could, in fact, have an indifference curve that is tangent at uh, point uh, B, in which case the individual uh, tends to consume not only more of the uh, subsidized good, that is, the individual's consumption of the subsidized good B goes from B2 to B4, uh, but the individual can, in fact, uh, uh, consume more of the unsubsidized uh, good. Uh, you can imagine why uh, parents uh, of, of school-aged children want their uh, children's education subsidized because it not only allows them to buy uh, more education, but it also allows them to buy more of other things, whether it's furniture for the house or boats uh, uh, for recreational uh, uh, purposes. Now, the question that uh, economists like to address is, is it better to subsidize um, uh, a particular good, like education, or for that matter, beans, uh, than to give people an, an increase in income? There's obviously an increase in income going to consumers, by virtue of the fact that consumers now are able to consume combinations that they once were not able uh, to do. In fact, this whole area represents uh, combinations that were previously uh, unattainable. Now, an increase in income uh, for consumers would mean that the prices of A and B would remain undisturbed. It would remain, mean, therefore, that the slope of the budget line would remain at this slope and the budget line would, would move out. Suppose that we gave people enough income so that they could, in fact, buy combination uh, B. Uh, if they could buy combination B, and I'm trying to draw this curve uh, parallel uh, to that line, um, then the budget line would look something like this. I know my hand is getting in the way, but I think I can do this. Well, notice that the new income uh, subsidy causes the budget line to move here. Notice that this uh, uh, new budget constraint must cut the indifference curve uh, I2 at point B. The reason is that the slope of the budget constraint is now greater than the slope of the indifference curve. So there's got to be a part of the indifference curve that goes above 
above the indifference curve. I mean, it's part of the budget constraint that goes above the indifference curve I2. This means that there's got to be a higher indifference curve that would move, that an individual could attain and move to a point like, uh, like C. Uh, C would be preferred to B. The moral of the story is uh, that an income grant to consumers would make them better off, um, uh, make them better off than they would be if they were given a subsidy in something like uh, education. This also means uh, that uh, the income grant could in fact be something less than the um, in-kind subsidy uh, grant. That is, an individual could move to a point like uh, point D, and I'm trying to stress it here, but points are very tight together. Uh, that point D is on the same indifference curve as is this point right, uh, right here, which we can call uh, A prime. Uh, consequently, you can you can uh, actually give less of a subsidy grant in the form of of income uh, than in um, uh, than in a reduction in the price uh, of of the good. One might wonder why there are so many uh, in-kind uh, subsidies. We subsidize the uh, food of the poor, the housing of the poor, the education of the poor, uh, the medical care of the poor. Uh, why, why don't we just give them income? Well, we do give them some incomes, but then we add all of these uh, reductions in, in prices uh, from uh, uh, subsidies. Why do we do that? Uh, well, my guess is that um, uh, taxpayers have a preference for uh, subsidizing people through particular goods. Why? Because they may consider the disadvantaged uh, people as having made uh, some wrong decisions over the course of their lives and that they want to influence their uh, consumption uh, of the good. Uh, and indeed when you give somebody a subsidy through a price reduction you're likely to find more of that good being purchased than if you give it give them a subsidy uh, in income. We can see that in terms of the uh, graph that we just uh, uh, discussed. That is, if we gave people a subsidy through a price reduction, they're going to consume combination B or B4 of good B. If we give them an in income increase, uh, then they're going to be at either C or D, depending upon the amount of the income uh, transfer. And that means that they're going to be buying uh, less of good B. It could uh, very well be uh, that taxpayers prefer to encourage the consumption of B. Now, poor people may also reason that uh, they can actually get more in the way of a subsidy through an in-kind uh, subsidy than through a money grant. Uh, they understand that taxpayers uh, want to influence their, the poor's, uh, behavior. So um, uh, the poor may reason, well, if I take the transfer in the form of an in-kind subsidy, uh, I'll get more than if I take it in the form of, of cash. So they are better off uh, as a consequence of a in-kind transfer than an, than an income uh, transfer. Uh, thank you very much for being with me.